Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make your own custom maps using Google Maps. Um, so first of all you just need to go to Google Maps on your internet browser. Um, so the easiest thing is just to put maps into a search engine and go to Google Maps and it will bring up this page here. Um, now you will need a, a Google account um, so make sure that you're signed into Google um, when you're doing this. Once you're on this page, go to this little cog in the bottom right. If you click on that, you'll have an option in the menu that says My Places. If you click that, it'll take you to the um, page where you can actually start creating a new map. So if you see there's a red button over here that says Create Map, if you click that, then this is how you start um, to create your own map. And again, just click Create a New Map and it will all be set up ready for you. So you'll then be presented with this page. Um, at, at the moment we're starting with an untitled map um, and this is where you can start adding places to your map. Now there are two um, principal ways of doing this. You can either add places manually by searching for them in the search bar here um, and or you can add places using a spreadsheet of data uh, that you can then import. So I'll show you how to do that in a little moment um, but I'll show you first of all how to add places manually. So just pop a postcode in here. I'm going to use the postcode of um, Gibside which is a National Trust place near me. So I'll just pop the postcode in there and search for it and you can see it's brought up a pin here um, to show where the Gibside estate is. If you click on that pin um, you can then choose to add it to your map just by clicking add to map here. So I'm going to click that um, and it's now added that place to my map and you can see over here um, in this bar um, you can see that it's added the pin and the postcode. Now you can edit the information that it displays and you can edit the way the pin looks as well just by clicking on it. Um, there's a little edit icon here and if you click that uh, so rather than displaying the postcode, which isn't all that useful, I'm going to um, change it to say Gibside. Okay, and you could add a little description in there if you wanted to. If you're happy with that, click Save. Um, now at the moment, obviously it's not showing any description next to the pin, it's just showing the pin. You can label the pin if you want to. So if you click Label over here, at the moment it's saying No Labels but I could label it with the name and the name I just typed in was Gibside so you can see now it's showing you uh, the Gibside label on there. You can also change the way that the pin looks. If you click Style um, the Gibside pin is coming up here and if you click this little paint bucket it'll let you choose from a number of different options so for instance maybe you want a star instead of a pin and you might want it to be blue um, you just simply click your options there and you can see that it's changed on the map so we've now got a blue star rather than the orange pin. Um, so I could carry on adding new um, items to my map just like that by searching um, and uh, adding them manually. Um, obviously that's that's okay if you've got a few to add but if you've got a large number um, of, of places to add it's probably easier to put them in a spreadsheet first and then import the data to your map so that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. So I'm just going to delete this Gibside one um, just by clicking on it and clicking the waste paper basket icon there so I'm going to delete that so we're back to a blank map again. So now I'm going to show you how to add information from a spreadsheet. So I've got a spreadsheet over here. Um, what I've got is a list of National Trust and English Heritage properties in my local area because I thought it would be really nice to be able to show those on a map um, so that I can plan to visit them. First of all, what you'll need to do is save your spreadsheet as a CSV file, which um, stands for Comma Separated Version, um, because that's the format that Google Maps needs it to be in to be able to import. So if you go to File and choose Save As, this will work in, I, I'm using OpenOffice, but it'll work in Excel as well. And where it says File Type, you just need to scroll down until you can see CSV. Um, so it'll say dot csv and that's what you want so if I choose that I'm just going to save it to the desktop click save um, don't worry about that that's just um, just click ok to those options so now I can go back to my maps 
and I can import this data into the map. So if you click import, it will then ask you to find the file of data that you want to import. So I'm just going to click select a file from your computer and what I want is my historic properties CSV file. So I'm going to click that and click open or you can just double click it. Now it'll ask you a couple of questions. First of all, it needs to know the file, the um, column in the spreadsheet that contains the data that will enable it to map. Um, so I'm going to use the postcode because I want it to look up all the places by postcode. So I'm going to click postcode and click continue. Um, and then it's asking me to pick a column to use for the title of the place mark. So I want to use the title of the property. Um, so I'm going to click property and finish. And in a moment or two, when it's uploaded that data, I'll then be able to see all the pins on the map. So it's imported 16 items, which I can see over here, and it's placed them all on the map according to their postcodes. Now, I haven't quite finished because there are a couple of things I want to do to this data. First of all, I would like each pin to be labelled with the name of the property. So if I go over to labels like we did before, the moment we've chosen no labels, well, I want to change that and choose property. And you can see now it's labelled each of these pins with the name of the property. So this one's Cragside, this one's Wallington, Belsay Hall and so on. Now, what I also would like to do is be able to distinguish between the National Trust properties and the English Heritage properties. Um, so I want to apply a style to my pins. I want to give them a different colour. Um, I want to make the National Trust ones green and the English Heritage ones red. At the moment, we've got a uniform style, so all the pins are styled in the same way. But you can change that. You can actually style by data column. And in the second column on my spreadsheet, I had um, organisation and it says whether it's English Heritage or um, National Trust. So that's what I want to use to apply a style. So I'm going to click organisation and you can see here now it's, it's automatically separated them out for me. Nine National Trust properties, seven English Heritage properties. Now I want the National Trust ones to be green, so I'm just going to click uh, the paint can again and choose green. And you can see that it's automatically changed them all. Um, and I actually want to make the English Heritage ones red to distinguish them a little bit more. So I'm going to choose red there. And bingo, there we have it. Um, a map of all the historic properties in the area. Um, National Trust ones green and English Heritage ones red. Um, you can zoom in and out like you can on any normal Google map and pull, pull the map around. And if you click on... Um, any individual pin it will give you the details that were in the sp spreadsheet so it's got the full address here um, the, the name of the property and the organization that runs that property and again you can delete properties um, as we did with it with the manually um, added ones just by pressing delete feature and you can edit the details by clicking edit there you can also get directions to the particular place by clicking the directions button so if we click that um, we can get directions, so say from, if you want to get there from Gateshead, you just click that and it will route for you um, like it would do on any normal Google map. There are a number of other things um, you can do. Uh, it's quite a good idea to give your map a title, so if you just simply click here, you can give your map a title. So historic properties in the north east so if I save that that's a little bit more of a descriptive title you can also change the look of the base map so this is the standard Google map but you can change it to um, a satellite image um, we'll just take a moment or two to change um, or you can pick various other different maps depending on how you want your map to look um, this is a very simple mono looking map for most purposes it's probably best just to have the basic basic map and finally once you've got your map how you want it you may well want to share it with other people um, there are two ways of doing that you can click the share button and it'll generate a link to take you to the map um, and you can share that via email or various social network sites. Um, but you do need to decide on your privacy settings. At the moment, it's set up as private, so only I can access it. Um, but we can change this. 
Um, so you can make it completely public. Um, obviously, this doesn't have any sort of sensitive data in it, so you could make it public. Or you could just share it with anyone who you've given the link to, or you can choose specific people. I'm going to make this one public because I'm actually going to show you also how you can embed it into a website. So I'm going to make it public on the web and save that. Um, so then I could just go ahead, take that link and share it wherever I want. And if people click on that link, they'll be able to see the map. I'll show you how that works if I copy it and paste it into a new window. Um, you'll see that people will be able to see the map that I've just created. They won't be able to edit it, but they'll be able to use the map um, and you know find directions and look at the details of the properties and that kind of thing. Okay, if I go back to, um, so I click done for that. Now, if you want to embed um, the map on a website, if you click this little folder up here and click embed on my site, it will generate a code and you simply copy that code and put it onto your um, onto your website. It's outside the scope of this tutorial to show you how to do that, but if you are a webmaster and you run a website, that's how you get the code to use on your site. Um, I can show you a site that I've done. Uh, this is my photography website, and I can show you that I, I did a map of photo locations in the area, and I've embedded that on my website. So this is what it looks like if you embed a map onto your website and then people can search it and zoom in and out and um, read all the information and that kind of stuff um, and of course you, you can add photos and extra information and web links and things like that um, just by editing the pins on your map so I hope that was useful. Um, do go to www.teachmetech.co.uk for more tutorials and tech tips. Thanks for listening.